So the Duelist Cup has finally concluded, and after a couple of days, Konami has finally released the top 100 player rankings. And as per usual, Master Duel Meta has gone ahead and compiled a top 100 list of the poor sods who spent 72 hours playing for 20 Legacy Packs. Oh boy, can't wait to get a hold of my 15th uncraftable gear for aid. Now that I think about it, it's kind of bad to call them Legacy Packs. I mean, at least Legacy Packs have Kraken. This one has... Desperado? Ridiculously awful rewards aside, I just wanted to quickly make a video showcasing the top 100 deck list to show you guys that might have missed it, show you guys what the best decks are in the format, and hopefully come across some spicy lists along the way. But before we get into the deck list, just a reminder, if you enjoyed today's video, finding this content useful, or want to see more content just like this in the future, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel down below, especially if you're a returning viewer, as apparently about 50% of the people watching this or even subscribed to the channel, you know nearly all of you are returning viewers who have seen my content before. So if you find yourself keep coming back to the channel, remember to leave a like on this video and consider subscribing down below. Alright, let's get into some deck lists. Alright, so today's video is going to be pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to start at number 100 and slowly scroll through each of the top 100 deck lists before finally reaching first place to show you guys which deck list actually won the entire event. Now keep in mind, I can't show you each of the top 100 all of them simply because not everyone posted their deck list publicly and I can't show you the ones that weren't posted. But the majority were posted and especially the top 10 were posted so you will see most of the deck lists in this video, just not all of them. Also, once I do reach the top 100 or once I go through all the deck lists, I will show you a nice little pie chart that will give you like a percentage of what art types took up the most percentage and you guys know how top cut percentage graph things look anyway, I'll show you one of those anyway. Alright, so let's get into the deck lists. I won't stop on each of the deck lists, like all the deck lists, simply because a lot of them will just be repeats, but I'll try to go through most of the spicier texts and sort of talk about, well, some of the, I don't know, we'll just go into it. Alright, so number 100, we have... <laughs> Lyriless Tri Brigade, a deck that's still managing to hold on. The first tier 1 deck list to Master Duel is still managing to hold on. Well, the first one was just Tri Brigade, wasn't it? But either way, Lyriless Tri Brigade was also a top tier contender and it's still managing to hold on simply because it just sets up a really unbeatable board state. So going first, you're probably going to win most of the time. Nothing too spicy I don't see in this deck list though. It's looking very, very, very standard actually. Yeah, very, very, very standard. Still coming the one negate, running the one searchable crow. Very standard stuff. Then we have a runic deck list, which I actually like this runic deck list a lot, except for the sphere mode. I'm not really sure what meta this is aimed at, as I guess he was coming across a lot of emancipators, or maybe he was coming across some more literalist tri brigades, simply because I don't really know what this thing's like targeted at. I know there's a lot of sword soul players and Sphere mode isn't that great into Sword Soul since they don't often set up three monsters. Normally they set their one trap card and their two negates, but I don't know. It's also really bad into Runic, so either way, he must have been coming across something they needed it for, so he teched it in. I do really like, though, and I highly encourage the One Day of Peace. I don't think many people are running this card, and I don't know why. It's so good in Runic. A lot of them are running the Upstart Goblin, which is a draw one. And this card's also a draw one, but it also comes with the added advantage of you, the, n neither player takes damage until the end of the opponent's next turn. So simply you activate it, you're not going to take damage guaranteed the next turn, so they can't kill you, which is really good in Runic where you try and delay the game as long as possible, and you often have a pretty empty field that's susceptible to taking some damage if you don't get some of your floodgates out. So I do like one day of peace, and it's kind of like the only real spicy tech in here. Yeah, other than that, just pretty simple stuff. Alright, who we got next? Number 99, Double Runic, Oh, Now this is an interesting list. Cyber Valley, I don't even know what this card does. I've seen it before though. You can only use one of these effects. When this card is targeted for an attack by an opponent's monster, you banish this card, draw one, until, okay. You can target one face up monster you control and it, and this card, banish both that target and this card, then draw two. Okay, so this is a draw two card. I guess that kind of works. It clears up your um extra monster zone for more special summoning as well, as on top of the drawing. You target one card in your graveyard, banish both this card and one card from your hand, then place a top card. Okay. And very good when it com combined with the reasoning and the monster gate, which will easily fill up your graveyard for more runic spells in combination with fountain. And he's running, he's running Allure as well. A lot of people cut this card. This card is, it's interesting, because I don't think this card is particularly great in runic, but it's really good in the current format where a lot of people are playing runic, because runics obviously activate a lot of quick play spells, so they're going to be banishing a lot of cards, so... Pretty good in this particular format anyway. 
Yeah, I'm running double the searcher. So pretty nice, nice spice in the looking deck. Especially considering he's running not many floodgates. But I assume by the uh, the way this this is formatted, he was playing this deck list as a bit more spicy one. Found it got a bit difficult, and they just chucked a bunch of floodgates in. This one looks way more standard, even with the Amano in there to make sure going second you're doing all right as well. All right, next up we had okay, we had an Ignista deck list. Now I'm not particularly sure how Ignistas work outside just summoning the big big boy that's just immune to everything. But, so I can't really talk too much about like techs or anything in this deck list, because I don't really know what's super techy. I know the Cosmic Cyclone's super good into Runic, so he's probably tech bat for that matchup. But in terms of like the actual deck list, I can't really help you too much. Also, no Max C, just running Droll and Lockbird. I guess Droll and Lockbird's probably a bit better into um most of the format rather than Max C, since a lot of people are just playing pretty slow floodgate style decks, so... Yeah, not bad. A lot because a lot of a lot of people playing um Flunderese as well as Runic, which John Lockbird's better at obviously into both those matches than fucking uh Maxi. Either way, not bad, not bad. Moving on. We had a brand Despia sticking to nearly 40 cards. It's pretty rare to see a 40 card brand of Despia these days. Also fairly a cheat on the cheaper end as well. How we could, I know how this guy kept it so cheap. Running the uh counter dragon card as well, sure, why not? I and mean, he's not running the um, Edo Lock, so he's just running one of the uh, branded trap cards. Fairly simple list. I think not, I think most aren't actually playing three copies of Frightful. I think most people are only playing two of this. Oh, they are playing three Agent, though. Is he playing three Territory as well? Or oh, Ferium Tragedy as well. It's actually a very simple down deck list. I can't really think of what cards he cut. A lot, of, a lot of cards had to be cut to make this, right? It's a fairly simplified list. Either way, not bad, not bad. I do like lists that are a lot more simplified. Because oh, he's running three. Wait, he's running three Albion. Nah, there's no way. Really? Okay. Well, I'm not sure why he needs three of this, but sure, I guess. Not a huge fan of that, but he obviously was. All right. Oh, gross. How does he? I guess. Damn, I'm surprised this did well in this format. There's so many runic deck lists, and floodgates are useless versus runic, and this is all about graveyard. Which is also, like, a lot of your cards get banished before they even go to the graveyard. I guess he's still got some standard brandedy stuff, but damn, I'm surprised the zombie deck did well currently. Either way, good job, buddy. <laughs> I don't really know what to say. Yeah, just good job. There's not really any um, interesting stuff in there, I don't think, to look at, though. We got another Tri Brigade Lyralisk. Nothing too spicy. What is that? Jack in the hand? Reveal three level one monster different names from your deck. Your opponent adds one to their hand, you add to your hand, and then shuffle the third into the deck. What the <laughs> what? What is that for? I have got a lot of level ones, but it's kind of a weird a weird choice. I think I've seen that before. Alright, moving on. Ugh, Endemion. Yeah, pendulums are. Not the most fun deck to look at. This doesn't look like the FTK variant though, right? Because they use triple copy of them, or more copies of this dude, so... Oh, he's just playing the <laughs> secret village of the spellcasters. I mean, don't blame him. Runic is pretty cancer. So that's a nice little floodgate card to counter Runic. Other than that though, just a lot of draw stuff, no hand traps, just going all in on just making the disgusting big negate board with secret village so your opponent can't activate any spell cards. Disgusting. Again, not much of a Pendulum player, though, so I can't really tell you if there's any, any other spicy tech lists in the actual Pendulum cards, though. Alright, we had another Amano list. Quick browse, see if there's anything spicy. No, not really. Seems pretty standard. Running level 4s does mean he can run things like the Time Thief and the number 41, though. But otherwise, I guess he's running an Unending Nightmare, which is pretty spicy-ish. Just sort of pop some of the more contiguous spells and other... Can he kill flood? He can't kill floodgates, if you like. Not that Runic cares about floodgates. All right, then we had our first Sword Soul deck list. A flat forty cards, running a lot of the standardy stuff. Two of this, three of this. Actually, is three tear actually um popular? That's not me too. Two blackout though, and also not running the big floodgate guy. I forgot the big floodgate guy's name. You guys know who I'm talking about. Damn, <laughs> is that a math work guy? Damn, Sigma males in here. Alright, and big Nimron Dragon. <laughs> okay, some interesting stuff in the extra deck, not sure about that one. But fairly standard deck list otherwise. Actually, not sure. Has he running Iris as well? Not interesting stuff in here. Alright, moving on, moving on. We have a. Oh god, fucking Drytron. 
Yeah, I was glad to see this decklist sort of fall out of popularity a little bit. I really don't like playing against Captain Herald over here. I don't want to have to run 15 Kaijus in my decklist. I do like to see the Natasha though. I'm a huge fan of the Cyber Angel stuff, so it's nice to see them be getting played somewhere. They can't be played in their own art type, so... That's nice to see. Otherwise, a pretty disgusting deck list otherwise. Extra for it. Pay half your life points, send my monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. Oh. Okay, so send this dude. Is that what he's using it for? I don't know, not, not a huge... Oh no, he's using it for art card, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah never mind. Alright, continuing on, we have three deck lists. Our first Marine Cess. Good to see a Marine Cess made top card. Huge fan of Marine Cess. Kind of a shame he played two other deck lists though, because I have no idea how much he had to go, how many points he got when he played this one. So hopefully he played this for a good amount, and it's not just kind of tagged on him here. But yeah, I do like to see Marine Cess. Very, very standard looking list. A lot of hand traps, triple maxi, triple ash, running the um, triple, yeah, Veiler, running the droplet. Very, very standard looking list. Actually, it's two Marine Cess wave. Normally they only run one because it's searchable. Not sure what he cut for that, but he had to cut something. Either way. Not bad, not bad. Pretty nice. We have a fl our first Flunderies deck list. Give it to 40 cards. Fairly simple. Obviously, Barrier Statue being removed has not affected this deck list much at all. Especially considering it's a great matchup into, Flunder into um, Runic because they like having their cards banished and they don't really care as much about a lot of the... Um, she didn't care a lot about the floodgates, but they just don't like they don't mind having their cards banished, so not too bad, not too bad. Also, because they're actually special summon, they play around the runic um, pop spell, which only targets special summon monsters, so. Very good matchup into runic. But I don't think he's running anything too spicy in there, so I think we can sort of move on from his list. Then we have uh, another brand deck list, 60 cards running. Ugh. There's no way this card doesn't get banned. This card so needs a. If this card is still out when the next load of um next load of wa next wave of support comes in for um, like when Tear Element and Sprite and all these decks start start running around. Oh my god, it's gonna be so gross. I hope this thing gets banned very quickly. Either way, it's funny a lot of weird stuff though. Book of Eclipse, sure I guess. All right, either way, either way. All right, moving on. Actually, she's running um, double or oh, triple keep as well. Alright, Invoked Shadol, 60 cards, oh god, there's so much, there's just so much stuff in here, it's like a pile of cards, how do you even like go through it all? Is that branded in here? They run branded? I did, I, okay, sure, I guess, he's running 60 cards, you'd have to fill it up with something. Actually, it's only one Alistair, it's not even that much of an Invoked list, it just happens to have one Alistair. Is he running the fields, is, is he not even running the fields, but he's just, I oh, know he's running it, okay. Just one Alistair. Yeah, sure, why not? Fuck it. Toss it in there. What even is this pile of cards? Uh, move it on, move it on. Wait, what is that? I don't- I'm, okay, I don't even bother. Move it on. <laughs> Number 71, we had another Sword Soul list, actually running the, um, Arch Nemesis Protoss this time. Ooh, double anti-spell fragrance, okay. That's a good way to deal with Runic. Looks like he actually just had this, I'm pretty sure he just had this deck list. Came across a bunch of Runic and then just tagged this on, didn't bother cutting anything. I think that's how he got to 42. It looks like he just had this, this deck list built and then just to ch chuck these on the end. Yeah, not bad, not bad, not bad. A lot more standard of an extra deck this time. I like this one way more than the other guys, way more. But I like this deck list more as a whole. I think I would cut two cards to make it 40, but otherwise, nice looking deck list. Alright, what is going on here? We have another runic with one sp another person liking sphere mode, okay. Sure, double cosmic for hit the mirror match, I guess. Jesus, the floodgates. Let's see, I think that's what my runic deck list looks like right now, actually. Alright, and this dude was running Admancipator, our first Admancipator list. Another grass is green. Damn, this card got so much play during this event. Holy. I think too spicy in here though, I don't think. Looks all pretty standard. Are they really running... I thought they only run one point kid. Run the other one as well. I guess you do, right? Yeah, I guess they do. Yeah, right. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Could there be more synchros in this deck though? Either way, moving on. Actually, how many block dragon? Yeah, he's running three. Alright, another version of your uh, Drytron stuff. Anything spicy in here though? Is it pretty standard looking? Pretty similar to the other one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it's all looking pretty standard. I think we'll move on from this one. Alright. 
Tanny with another Sword Soul deck, playing extremely standard, except with triple cosmic and a actually it's funny a ghost bell. Strange. I don't think most people are running Ghost Bell, but must be a lot of graveyard stuff he was facing. I thought he just wanted to cross out target, which is quite likely since he's wanting one Veil or one um, Ghost Bell. Triple cross, uh, Cosmic, obviously for the Runic matchup, because they don't like banishing quick play, because they're all about protecting from destruction. And a bit more of a weird extra deck with whatever the fuck that thing is. <laughs> okay. Either way, the rest of the deck is pretty standard. Alright, up next we have Luck. Oh, Lanko? But he's a uh, Tri Brigade. No, it, no, I was going to say Lyrilis. There's no Lyrilis going there. Just Tri Brigade branded. Obviously running the Triple Rescue Cat because it sets up an insane end board in this deck list. Opting for three draw and Lockbird and running the Double Gamma as well. 45 cards. Alright. It's running Triple Small World. I'm not sure about going over 45 cards just to run three searches. I feel like you should just run less cards so you just draw your cards better. I'll just run less hand traps or something, but hey, this guy topped, I didn't, so <laughs> he obviously knows better than me. Alright, moving on. We had, cannot pronounce that, number 52, playing a lot of <laughs> Tri Brigade Lyrilis stuff. I'm looking for any spicy stuff, I don't see anything too spicy, so I think we'll skim over this one as well. We're going over quite a few of these deck lists now. Alright, back to Flunderies. Nothing too spicy, I think. The running the one pot, the triple extravagance, the bunch of random shit in the extra deck because it doesn't matter. Going over 40 though, not pretty gross. Actually opting to run Max C. I think most of them do run Max C, do they? Not in current form, but anyway. Especially considering it's like an anti um runic sort of deck nowadays. Either way. Sure, sure, good job. We have Oh, okay, Code Talker. Okay, now this is another deck list I'm not super familiar with. Don't see it that often, but goddamn, nice to see it topping. Actually rank 45 too. Double anti-spell fragrance, a lot of solemns actually, holy, running the entire collection. Damn, this dude wanted some negates. Is that, someone tell me in the comments if that's a common trend for, for um, Code Talks to run solemns. That's pretty extreme. Actually, he's running actually a lot of tech cards, a billion solemns, and look at all the hand traps he's running. Shit, this deck must be just like a full-on just one card combo of debug or something. Even running, fitting in a ghost ogre as well. Damn, and he's keeping it to 40 cards too, props to him. Might just be a decode talker sort of a deck list though. Alright, nice deck anyway, nice to see it topping. Alright, then we had another branded and another branded list. This one's playing Adventure. First time I've seen Adventure in the um, top cut. A lot of people just straight up just dropped it after um, all the nerfs it received, so... Good to see someone playing it at least. I'm not a huge fan of playing the package anymore, but good on him. We had the other branded playing... Oh god, Eldlich. Is there a grass in here? No, he's just playing 60 card without grass? That's disgusting. <laughs> 60 card and no grass. That is disgusting. Alright, moving on. Uh, another adventure package. I think it's looking I think too spicy other than that though. Looking all pretty standard. Alright, it's some runics. I'm I'm ashamed no one played any fun meme cards in the extra deck. No like fun meme fusion monsters in runics and because they can. Come on, perfect opportunity to top cut with some of the random ass fusion monsters in the game, guys. What are you doing? Alright, it's a pretty standard list though, so we can move on from that one. Another pretty standard looking list, just checking real quick. Triple Solemn Judgment, because he was a bit annoyed at all the um, back removal being played. Sure. Another, okay, another um, Ignista deck list. Nice to see, looking a lot different from the other one, I think. Still not too sure about um what, what a good tech cards are, what he's cutting and replacing this deck list, so I don't play it myself, but... Good to see another one, another Ignista topping, because Ignista is a pretty cool deck list. Just big towers the deck. Not bad, not bad. Another Flunderies. I don't think there's anything too spicy in this one. One copy of Evenly. Wait, is that? Really? <laughs> I mean, it is a wind monster, but really? <laughs> You're running that? Okay. Sure, I guess. That, there's no way that's common. Before I've scrolled over 30 of these and haven't noticed in the deck list. I'm just surprised to see it. Either way. This is like target one on back row pop card, right? It is. Alright. On, good on you. Running short book of moon to avoid the imperms and the effect failures. 
another runic deck list. Not too many um, cards in there that are spicy. We had going second tribe brigade by the looks of things. He's got a lot of tribe brigade cards, and he's got fucking alpha in here for the alpha male over here. He's got a dino wrestler pankatrops as well. Just a couple of just random ass going second cards. Maybe they're um small world bridges. I have no idea. Fuck, if I'm gonna do that math. But either way, cool to see some spicy going second cards. People attacking for the um going second matchups. Good to see. All right, moving on. We have uh, more pendulum. Ugh. This is looking pretty FTK. Yep, this is an FTK deck. Oh god, it's so gross. The fact this is actually around is so annoying. FTK should never be meta relevant ever. This is actually a meta relevant FTK. So, I'd be highly surprised if this doesn't get heavy hits. Especially looking at this card. This card's completely banned in TCG. So. I would be surprised if this one doesn't get some severe hits to remove the FTK, because it needs to go. It just needs to go. I don't even know what this deck list does, otherwise just stop Apollosis and stuff, I guess. Either way. Not a huge fan of Pendulum decks, so bias. We're going to scroll, keep scrolling. <laughs> Alright, got Branded. Anything spicy in here? No, just running, opting for Drawn Lockbird. This hatchet got a lot of prevalence in this tournament by the looks of things. I yeah, think this guy's running Drawl as well. But on that's looking pretty standard though, so I'm gonna keep scrolling. Ah, uh, another Admancipator deck list, 60 cards, triple block, rain up the triple grass. Is that a brilliant fusion being played? The card's completely banned in TCG. What's it being, what's it being played for to summon out this dude? I have no idea why we've been playing this, but either way, good on him. Triple small world. The Gem Knight Emerald. Just a random ass gem knight package in here. I have no idea what that's for. Maybe someone in the comments will tell me what sort of, um, why we're running a little gem knight package, but nice to see it anyway. Alright, coming into the top 20 now. Oh, the yeah, top, yeah, top 20. Another guy running Runic Allure. Triple running over Amano. Our summon limit. I think it's the first time we've seen that one. But other than that, pretty standard deck list. Alright, number 15. Oh, skipped a bunch there. Number 15. We've got Flunderies running double, uh, double Max, Double Ash. Pretty standard stuff, though. It's triple evenly, though. This man was not happy about Floodgates. God damn, he's not happy about it. This deck is actually so anti runic We've got triple copies of the um, Dimension Shifter and the triple evenly. I should have a pretty good matchup into it. Alright, next up we have. Oh, holy shit. Straight to, straight to top 10. Alright. We had Sword Soul and Branded. Now, we got anything in here looking too spicy. We are in the top 10 now, so you should probably take a good look at some of these deck lists. Opting for both the trap cards for um, Branded, which is pretty nuts. Alright, <laughs> running the uh, one copy of Anima, sure. Well, um, the Sword Soul list is looking very standard, though. He's not running the um, Floodgate dude. Running one Cosmic. <laughs> This dude's copium him, hoping to draw this against uh, the Runic matchup, but he's top 10, so he must have drawn it quite a, bu quite a lot. God Gamer over here. Oh, I haven't seen this card very often. Like an Extinction Knight. That card's fallen out of favour quite a lot, so good to see him around. Alright, next up we have number 9, a Flunderies. I wonder if Flunderies and Runic were the top 2 deck list. It seems like it. There's a lot of Flunderies. Things like it's Flunderies, Branded, and um, Runic look like they're all the top cut decks. So the ones that are probably likely to be hit by any uh, ban lists that come up. Nothing too spicy in this man's list though, looking very standard. 41 cards, which is running one card extra for some reason, but sure. It's looking alright, moving on. Alright, we have number 8. Another Flunderies deck list. Triple book in this one, this guy wasn't running any book. Alright, another guy that hates Floodgates, running a copy of DD Crow, a triple shifter of course. Alright, alright. Coming in number 7, we have another runic matchup, another movie runic deck list. Nothing, definitely nothing spicy in this deck list, very very standard looking. Alright, alright, moving on, moving on. Number six, more Gem Knights being played. Is this just a common thing that I just haven't paid attention to and fucking emancipated? They all play Gem, gem Knight stuff? Sure, whatever. Alright, 60 card deck list, triple grass, stuff, 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 stuff. What is that? Turbo Booster? 
You have if you have normal summon and what's this turn, you can spare summon this card from your hand. Okay. You tribute destroy one okay, sure. And our first copy of um Virtual World actually. Adventure of Virtual World. Did not expect to see Virtual World anymore. That's kinda nice to see. No VFD Virtual World is like I thought the deck was just just not that great anymore, but must be able to do something with this guy's top gun with it. Actually I think the um where is he? The this dude must be pretty good into Runic, right? Is this sending me to the graveyard? Any card sent from the field to the graveyard is banished instead. That'd be pretty good into um, Runic, actually. Yeah, not too, not too bad, not too bad. Good to see there's um, some more variety in the top card. What are you? Spell Canceller. Spell cards and their effects on the field cannot be activated. Negate all spell effects on the field. Wow, okay. Man, I was talking shit about Legacy Packs at the start of this video, but goddamn, this one's making top card. All right, moving on. <clears throat> and we have Neil with another branded deck list. Coming in at number five now. Shadol's being played in here. Grass and Shadol stuff. What? Actually, there's nothing that much to show. Just one Shadol card. What is going on here? I really don't like the 30 card branded deck list. Simply because it feels super hard to get a hold of branded fusion a lot of time anyway. But I guess if you get three copies of Grass, you're probably pretty set to go anyway. You just yeah, you're probably pretty set. Just draw either of these, draw a triple of this, draw one of these dudes, and you're probably good to go. Or just draw the brand infusion. All right, good job with number five on fifth place. Coming number four, we have another bunch of runic stuff playing. Actually playing Max C. I think it's the first runic deck list we've seen actually bothering to play hand traps. Normally they just play floodgates instead, so. Hey, maybe that, maybe that is the way to go. Now, come at number fourth. This deck list is fairly cheap, too, actually. So you don't really need three copies of this dude. Probably need three copies of Hugon, though. You replace this with, like, Summon Limit. You can make a really cheap version of this deck list. Alright, we have another... Oh, God. Coming at number three now, we have another Flunderies matchup. Or another Flunderies deck list. Very standard still, there's only two insane in this list. Having obviously true a book. And the jack in the hand. Alright, alright. Damn, uh, another person. I guess this card's actually a lot more popular than I thought it was. I just haven't seen it. I have, have not paid enough attention to flea matchups, I guess. Damn, I guess just. This deck was really just did not care about having its barrier statue hit, huh? <laughs> did not give half a fuck. Alright. Kate, shout out to KG at YouTube. Another Flunderies coming in at second down. This deck list was so popular this event. I guess it's just, it's just a complete counter to Runic, so that's probably why it's being played. Disgusting. Don't think there's any spicy text in here to go over though. Looking very, very standard once again. Alright. And finally, our winner of the event, coming in at first place, we had... Adve... Uh, no, Avenger, sorry. And I fucked it up, of course. Admancipator playing the Weeping Idol. And no Gem Knights in this one. Damn. I was hoping to give more commentary over kind of first place, but I don't play Admancipator either, either, so I'm not super versed in this deck list either. I mean, quite a few prank kids. Nothing super sticks out to me though, it's like super spicy. I've seen most of these cards in um, the Emancipated deck list. I think the main reason Emancipated did so well in this particular event is Block Dragon is actually just really good into Runix. I can't destroy it because it's obviously immune to destruction and Runix pop does nothing to it. And just keeps recycling itself from Graveyard anyway. And it sums itself from Graveyard. It's actually pretty damn insane. So after compiling all the deck lists, this is what we're left with. A pretty clear top three deck lists in the format being Runic, Branded Despia, and Flunderese. Then a lot of sort of tier two sort of stuff being Sword Soul, and then an Emancipator, maybe Tri Brigade or Ignista. But generally, it's just going to be a top card being your Branded, your Runic, and your Flunderese, and everything else just sort of trying to cling on for dear life. It's amazing that Emancipator actually won the event, considering how much more powerful and dominant the other ones seem to be. But either way, this is sort of what we're left with. I'm not sure what to think of this format. It seems absolutely atrocious to me as I hate playing against Flunderies and I hate playing against Runic. So hopefully a ban list comes at some point or a new format comes at some point sort of sweeps this stuff away because this is cancer to look at. Either way, guys, that's going to do it for today's top cut, top, I don't know, 
top deck list video. I don't know what to call this thing. But either way, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, hope to see you guys in the next one. Laters. Hey, big brother, can I watch SpongeBob? Shut up, Mokuba. I'm busy flagging YouTube videos to compensate for the fact that I have an extremely small penis. Oh.